Hey guys, I'm your host, Sarah Thomas, and I'm so excited you tuned into Fit Girl Talk Radio today. As always, thank you for tuning in on a podcast platform. And if you have not yet, hop over to YouTube and check out our YouTube channel because it's new and um, it's... I'm really liking it because it's a way to see my guests and see how we interact and like our facial expressions and everything that genuinely happens during the podcast. Um, I need to figure out a way to promote it more and get it out there more. Um, So if you like something, like give it an actual like, uh, subscribe to it. I'm still learning things about YouTube, so I don't really know how to even, I don't know, I'm working on it. So if you guys can help me do that, that would be a big deal for me. So thank you. Um, without further ado, today we have on Katie Kerner Miller. You probably know her as Katie <laughs> Miller. Um, she's been on before she was on last summer. Um, so if you guys are curious about Katie's like whole journey into who she is now from extreme bikini competitor, um, for years, like started in her like 20s, she like worked multiple jobs to get on stage, um, like to pay for all of that. She has a really inspirational, amazing story about how she got to where she is now. All of that is on the previous episode. So go find that um, because we've got bigger fish to fry today. So Katie, welcome and tell us what's been going on since the summer. Hey, thank you so much for having me and having me in this space. And I love how you're like, putting it on YouTube so people can feel, you know, our energy and facial expressions, energy is everything. But um, it's crazy because last time I was here, I, I don't know if I was working on my certifications yet, but ever since then I got certified and, you know, board recognized, certified in life and success coaching, clinical hypnotherapy, um, NLP, which is neuro-linguistic programming and EFT and time techniques. So I've been doing a lot and things have changed. (laughs) Uh, Yeah, so it hasn't been a quiet end of the year for 2020 for you. So that's awesome. Um, I've been watching you go through all of that for the last few months and it's super inspiring. Um, So why don't you just um, briefly touch on really like what that is and what you're doing now for your business? Yeah, so it's a lot of like, basically the easiest way to describe it is psychology. It's the human mind. So the human brain, I I, I guess I wouldn't say psychology. So the brain and mind are completely separate. And so it's a lot of studying mainly the mind and how it works and how we respond to certain situations and the subconscious mind, which is all, it's all patterns from when we are younger and we act upon them without knowing. So if you don't bring awareness to these patterns, and intentionally change them, you're going to continue to repeat old annoying habits that you've been trying to overcome for a long because you didn't go to the subconscious level. And so that's basically what all of those certifications help me use like different modalities in my clients to help them bust through old subconscious programming and create new ones. That is so awesome. So, um, Katie is going to talk about that more the second half of this podcast. Um, So, you know, just keep that in the forefront of your mind. And we're going to come back to that in a little bit. Um, The main reason why I brought Katie on today is because I wanted her to talk with us about shifting your mindset from a diet mindset um, into a balanced and free mindset with food and nutrition. Um, This is something that I love to see. I've been seeing it all over my social media. And I don't know if that's just um, relevant because my personal outlook on food and my health and wellness shifted this year. So naturally I started following more people that live that way um, and that promote that. So maybe your social media doesn't look like that, but mine does. So I think it's something like very important to talk about because when you read that and you see it and you see a professional talking about, you know, just follow your, you know, food intuition and eat what sounds good and eat when you're hungry and stuff when you're not like all of that stuff sounds so good on paper, but when you actually are living your day-to-day life, um, it's not that clear and that simple and trust me as somebody that's gone through that myself the last year, two years, um, Katie's gone through it too. Um, 
once you get the hang of it, it's absolutely life-changing, but it's not easy. And it's not something that's going to just change for you in um, a week because you've decided to change your mindset on it. So that's why I wanted Katie to come on as a professional to explain that further to us and give us some of her solid tips um, and advice that she uses for herself and her clients. Whew, that was a long winded intro <laughs> into what we're going to talk about. Um, but Katie, why don't you start by telling us kind of how you personally started to shift your mindset in this area? Yeah. So this is actually something I specialize in is I intertwine um, mindset with, you know, practicality and strategy with, you know, helping people transition away from diet culture, but still have um, a routine. Like it's not, you can't just transition from diet culture to intuitive eating. You're so disconnected with your intuition and your body's hunger and fullness cues. So I'm kind of the gap in between you know, diet culture, tracking macros, logging every morsel you eat and um, intuitive eating. So I'm, I'm the bridge between that. And I would say there has to be strategy there a hundred percent. It's not all mindset, but pair it with mindset and it is really a game changer. So um, I connect people with their intuition through mindset work. That's the major thing. Um, and we'll get more into that. And then also I have a different kind of formula. So a lot of people that come to me are coming to me from restrictive protocols, like past competitors, or they were coached by a competitor and the competitor called it lifestyle coaching. When in my opinion, that's not really lifestyle coaching. That's coaching someone who's not competing to be a competitor, kind of, I don't know, that's just my opinion with it. And um, so basically what it is, is it's not tracking any macros, but it is kind of focused around balanced and portioned meals. So you're feeling good. You can still continue to lose weight on it, but you're not so obsessive. Like when you look at a piece of, I don't know, bread, you're not like, oh, this is, 20 carbs, two fat and three protein kind of thing. You're looking at it like, Hey, that's a carb source, but it's probably not going to fill me up that much. So I'm going to shoot for like the rice or, you know, the oatmeal kind of thing, instead of just like a formula in your mind. And then that also helps you like on the weekend when maybe you're traveling, it helps you not obsess about food and it connects you more to your hunger and fullness cues because you know what certain foods are supposed to feel like, what a portion is supposed to feel like kind of thing. Blend that with um, releasing all the internal crap that's not serving you, you know, like limiting beliefs and all that. It it really, really can um, connect you closer to your your intuition. But I do want to say it is a bridge, like it's a bridge period. You're not going to go, you know, you my always, my friend always says, you don't bring tampons to a baby shower as if, and when she said that, I was like, what does that even mean? But she explained it like you bring diapers to a baby shower because they don't need tampons yet. <laughs> and so you're not going to go from, you know, diapers to tampons in, in a second. That's like the most random and probably gross <laughs> analogy. <laughs> I feel like you probably have a lot of women on here and they're like, oh, that resonates. But <laughs> Um, so you have to have that bridge period and you have to have patience and knowing that it's not going to happen overnight, but if you are open to new approaches and are willing to let go of that, you know, bodybuilding or diet culture, you will get to a place where you can lose weight, just eating mindfully or, um, maintain the physique that you love without going to crazy extremes. So I love this because I think for the number one tool to use is education. And that's what you touched on right away is that when you look at food, a lot of us, um, if you're listening um, and you're a chronic dieter or past competitor, current competitor, whatever, any of those things, you see numbers, right? I mean, and, and Katie, you still see numbers, even though you don't focus on it. We are just, that's what we know. Um, But when you educate yourself further on what that food actually is for, it's not just a number to help you reach a goal with your numbers for the day. It's actually, like you said, 
an energy source like this carb that you're choosing to eat with your lunch? Is it something that's going to sustain you until dinner or is it something that's just going to taste good for now? And then are you going to get hungry again in an hour? You know, um, so like really understanding and educating yourself on actually what food is and what its purpose is. Um, that's something for me this year that was a big um, turnaround personally, because don't get me wrong. Like I have a degree in nutrition and exercise physiology. Like I know about nutrition. Um, I've learned about it. I've studied it. It serves me in a different way this year than it did for the last three years. Um, I'm no longer working to change my physique and build a shape. I'm eating for health, energy, daily quality of life. Um, you know, I don't want to be deprived and depleted and, you know, lose five pounds so I can, you know, reach the stage weight. Like that's not where I'm at anymore. And a lot of you listening probably never needed to be there, you know? Um, so educate yourself on food sources. Um, so did you have anything to add about like, um, kind of how to go about that? Yeah, I do want to say something um, because it's coming to me and it's like, you need to get this out. So I do teach macros a little, like a brief, like knowledge is power, right? Um, like you need to know, like, what is a carb source? <laughs> what is a fat source? And what do these do to, for me? And like, whoa, like this bag of chips, like the portion size for amount of carbs is like not very big. So um, knowledge is power. So I do briefly touch on that. But for a lot of people, it is unlearning that step. Some people come to me and they don't even know what a macro is. So I have to kind of like bridge that gap. Have, yeah. You know, probably three fourths of them, it is unlearning it. But one fourth of them is like teaching them, okay, yes. what the heck is a macro even? So it's good. I think it's, it's good to have a knowledge base around macros. But I think, I don't think, I know diet culture takes it 10 steps too far. And that's what like you and I, are helping people kind of like unlearn and yeah. <laughs> what sounds like you went through that process as well. And like, you know, it's an ever going process. I will say two years ago is when I started. And by this fall is probably when I really, really felt like food freedom. Um, and it's, it's a process. Um, yeah. Yeah. I totally agree. And, you know, I think like you said, you absolutely can, look at food and nutrition this way and still lose weight. You can still have numbers in your head and understand what's going on with that um, and and still work towards weight loss. There's nothing wrong with that. And don't let anybody make you feel bad for if you want to lose weight. If you don't want to lose weight, then you don't need to lose weight, okay? So that's up to you. Um, I wish that more clients um, came to me with the mindset of, I want to feel better. You know, when I do have a client like that, it's like so refreshing. Um, it's few and far between, but I want to feel better. I want to have more energy throughout the day. I want to have more quality of life for conversations with my family at dinner, my husband in the evenings, like that all plays into what you're eating on a daily basis. Um, a hundred percent. So if you feel sluggish and crummy by the end of the day, every day, hello, we've all been there. Like those are red flags. You need to be doing something different with what you're consuming. Um, so anyways, I digress. I just wish that more people realize that food is such a tool beyond your weight. Yeah. And I will have to say like blending the law of attraction into that. Like if you do want to lose weight or you do want to feel better, like you want to focus on like, what is that version of yourself who does feel better? Um, how does she act? Like, what does she do? And like, same, like if you're wanting to lose weight, you should never focus on losing weight. You should focus on your, that physique that you want to achieve. And then you're like, okay, that version of me that has this physique, what does she do? She's probably not obsessing about weight loss 24 seven. She's eating to feel her best. She's, you know, eating to have good energy throughout the, the day because you all, we all know energy is everything. When your energy is good, you, you thrive and you can do anything. So that if you could take, if, I don't know, I'm, I'm assuming just it's January, a lot of women are being bombarded with, you know, weight loss ads. If you could take away one thing from something I say in this podcast is if you're wanting to lose weight, don't focus on weight loss in your mind, focus on that dream physique. 
because that is what's going to get you there. It, it's the law of attraction. What you think about expands. So if you're constantly thinking about weight loss, that's like, and you can say like, um, what was it? Someone worded this, but I always forget to say it. It's instead of saying weight loss, you could say, um, I forget the word, it's going to come to me, but you don't want it because our subconscious doesn't want to lose things. Oh. So it won't resonate. You can say release weight instead of weight loss. But there's a lot of things that go much deeper than you would think with a subconscious mind. So focus on that dream physique, not weight loss. Yes. Um, I totally agree with that. And if you guys that are listening, listen to last week's episode, my guest and I, we talked about journaling and kind of how to use that to your power. And um, I think that what Katie's saying kind of goes hand in hand with that. Um, so envisioning what you want, what you want to be, you know, like a new year's resolution to lose 10 pounds is fine, but why, you know, why, and what, what is that going to look like to you? Um, what about you is going to change if you lose 10 pounds? Why do you want to be there? You know, um, I think that's very, very important. I get caught up in that too, personally, so no shame, um, but kind of opening yourself up to the bigger picture of what exactly you want and why you want it. Because if you don't know, then how does the universe or whoever is going to, whatever is going to help you with that, how do they know what to give you if you don't know what you want? Um, mm -hmm. So becoming clear on your goals and why you need them is very important as well. So I think that's a very good tip too. Um, let's see what other tips for, so what do you kind of recommend to clients for, um, a balanced plate, like for breakfast, lunch, and dinner, however you tell people to eat kind of what's some advice there. So I usually just say, you know, carb, fat, protein for meals. And then, you know, for the snacks in between the meals, just meals, just at least two macronutrients. So if you want a fat and a carb or a carb and a fat, um, you know, or a protein and a carb kind of thing, um, the snacks don't necessarily have to be as balanced, because the protein and the fat, if it's in there somewhere, it's going to slow to the digestion and then you're not going to, you know, crash. So, and then you won't have to stress about making every single thing you eat balanced. And what I'm referring to is like mainly what I do with my clients. And this can be changed because everyone's different. I personally like eating multiple times a day. It, it feels good to me. So it's, I do three meals and then two snacks for the majority of my clients. And it's nothing crazy. Like you have to eat a protein each snack. No, it's like, okay, a protein bar, it, like something easy on the go, realistic lifestyle, something you can do for the rest of your life. I'm not going to be eating like chicken at 9 a.m. for my second like, for my snack no no thank you I know you've probably done that before because I have yes. <laughs> yes we've all been there before and if you're there and you're dreading it you don't like it it's not necessary at all yeah so I like that um I think that anybody listening if this is something that you know you're ready to do and you want to have a non-diet diet um you know, make sure you find a coach or a professional, somebody that you trust that has this mindset around how they work with their clients too. Um, because there's plenty of them out there and Katie's one of them. So, you know, make sure that you find somebody that actually wants to talk with you and work with you, make sure you're feeling good, um, that whatever you're eating and how you're eating is realistic and fits in with your day. Exactly. Like she said, just because Katie eats three meals and two snacks does not mean that she's going to have you do that if you don't want to do that. So finding somebody that is knowledgeable about what they're basically prescribing to you is very important as well. Um, so I'm trying to think if there's any other like actual tips on my mind for this. Um, like I said, I've just gone through such a change with it this year and I'm still learning as I go too. Um, so I think um, for me, especially coming out of competing, a big challenge for myself has been to add in more fruits and vegetables. Um, like I've said it a thousand times on this podcast, but the health industry is not the fitness industry. So I was so focused on numbers and food and physique for so long. Now I am trying to focus much more on whole foods and vegetables and fruits and things that weren't priority before, which seems crazy to say, you know. Um, but yeah, that's been something for me personally. 
Yeah, that was for sure. And I remember even my mom is like dieting and it's crazy. Like, cause she's like, oh, I can't eat Brussels sprouts. There's too many carbs in them. <laughs> like, ah, but you know, I just keep my mouth shut. Like, cause you know, even though they know I specialize in a lot of this, you know, it's, you keep your mouth shut around your family. <laughs> it's so funny because my family is the same way. Like well, my mom will kind of ask me a lot of stuff, but like the rest of my family, like they talk about what they're doing and what their new diet plan is. But like, it's like, they almost don't want to like, look at me in the eyes. Like they don't want to like, you know, and that's fine. And I don't say anything, you know, I just agree with it. And, you know, I'm like, if you want my advice, I'll give it to you. But if not, I respect that. Like, <laughs> that's so funny. I totally get that. Yeah, for sure. Um, so I wanted to, since I am offering a, um, a free hypnosis session for anybody who's listening to this, I wanted to kind of like briefly touch on what it is. So I have the definition right here. I just wanted to make sure I said it specifically right for you guys to understand. So I got certified in hypnosis to help bring more, you know, mindset, you know, modalities to my clients. And I'm not just a health coach. I'm like, also, you know, mindset coach. So hypnosis is relaxation plus focused attention to speak to your subconscious mind. The body is much like a robot that it simply responds to instructions from the mind. Hypnosis creates thoughts and feelings so real that the body reacts biochemically. And so an example of this is if you can um, imagine a lemon right now, like if we were close, closing our eyes and like imagining biting into a lemon, our mouth just automatically waters. And so that's an example of, you know, how the body acts like a robot. So if you can strip down everything, get yourself, your brain waves in a theta state, it's way more suggestible. And then that's where you implement the, um, the like actual, like quote unquote therapy. I said, so I say quote unquote therapy because in Colorado, I'm not allowed to call myself a hypnotherapist. It's like the only state I'm, I'm supposed to call myself a hypnotist. So, um, but it's, it's the therapy part. Um, and that's where you implement kind of the goal you're wanting to achieve while your brain's in a highly suggestible state. So it, you don't just have to have a mindset goal to do this. It could be a health goal that you're wanting to implement. Maybe something that you've been sabotaging yourself over and over trying to achieve and you haven't quite got there. You've been at the cusp and this will help just embed it in your subconscious mind. And so then you act upon it. Um, and it, it's super powerful. So anybody who's listening to this, free um i'm giving not everybody but one <laughs> one hypnosis session for free so um sarah and i will work out the details yes so um katie if whoever wins this what exactly does a session of hypnosis look like with you um is it a phone call is it a facetime is it a recording or how does it work yeah, so it's a Zoom call. I use, I was trained with the Krasner method, um, which is a, a, you know, step of systems. And so basically I would interview you first. It's this process called NLP Achievable Outcomes. So that's using all of your senses, everything to figure out what it is that you truly want. And so when I can implement that in the like therapy portion, see, hear, feel, smell, whatever comes up, it's just that much more impactful. And then, um, so it's on Zoom, I think I already said that. And then um, I'll take you through like a suggestibility test. So that's kind of just to show you how hypnosis works very briefly. And then the induction period. So that's kind of like a very, very vivid, um, a very, very vivid, which we call it meditation. And so it's not anything like stage hypnosis. I meant to say that it's, it's totally normal. I'm not going to do anything crazy. Um, it's, it's really, really one of the best te techniques that have changed my life. And so you are not asleep in hypnosis, FYI. You're totally in control, fully in control, fully awake, just in a very relaxed state, probably the most relaxed state you'll ever be in your entire life while you're fully awake. And then I'll implement the therapy using 
everything I interviewed of. And then after, I'll leave you with a personalized recording so that you can listen to it every single day for X amount of days to fully embed this on your subconscious mind. That is awesome. Um, we had on another hypnotherapist or hypnotist. Um, like I had her on a long, long, long time ago. Um, and if you guys want a little bit of information on that, there's a whole nother podcast on that too. But what Katie's doing is a little bit different. Um, and it's a little more, it's just a little bit different. So if you like what Katie's saying, I recommend reaching out to her. Um, definitely follow her. I obviously will tag all of her socials in the description of this podcast. Um, but Katie just comes from a different place. Like she's just been through so much as far as fitness and nutrition and health and wellness, um, life changes, um, like business ventures, reaching for goals, like making, moving across the country, halfway across the country, you know, like doing a lot of stuff. Katie's gone through so many things and she talks about it all the time on her socials and she wants to help other people that want to do these things too. So, you know, give her a follow and, um, I'll have the details on how to win that, um, hypnosis with her, um, on our Instagram at fake girl talk radio. Um, it'll be the usual ditty. Follow me, follow her, probably tag a friend or whatever. Um, we'll figure that out. And yeah, I think it's going to be really awesome. I always wish I can enter it and win the giveaways. Um, so somebody good will win and I hope they tell me all about it. So, um, Katie, did you have anything else you wanted to touch on, um, before we wrap up? Hmm. I think I just want to say like that, like if you're struggling with like health and nutrition, like you are closer to your intuition than you know. And I'm sure if you listen to Sarah's podcast, you've heard all the tips to get closer to your intuition, you know, via journaling, meditation, whatever it is, um, keep showing up for yourself and doing the internal work. And that's um, combined with some sort of strategy to help you, you know, have a more balanced and free life. Um, it, you have everything you need inside of you. So don't doubt yourself and, you know, keep showing up for yourself keep showing up. That's my motto for um, 2021. Just keep showing up. So I love that you said that. Love so <laughs> yes. Okay. Well, Katie, thank you so much. I always love having you on. Um, you're just such a, a ray of sunshine and full of knowledge. So I love having you on and um, I'm sure I'll have you on again next season. Thank you so much, Sarah.